So for part b, we're told that the surface charge density is equal to some constant. And then now we want to find the potential. So once again, the potential is going to look like this. So I think you've come across this quite a few times already at this point. And then we're told in one of the examples that for any given charge density, this relationship, this relationship is true. So AL is going to be given by this expression. So I'm not going to prove this. You can go back to the example and look at the proof yourself. And so now we're given that this function is a constant. So what is AL going to be? So once we've found this, we'll have essentially found the potential inside of the sphere. So let's try to evaluate AL. So AL is given by this expression. Only this time it's a constant. And then just like in the previous in the previous section, we can express this in terms of a Legendre polynomial. And then because the Legendre polynomials are all orthogonal, all the terms from 1 to infinity, they're all going to be equal to 0. So only the a0 term survives. So only, only, a, for, uh, only the only a term that survives is the one where l is equal to 0. So when l is equal to 0, you have a 1 over r to the power of negative 1, so I can just put the r back on top. You have a sigma and the Legendre polynomial, so it's a, it's the case where L is equal to equal to zero. So this integral evaluates to two over two L plus one, and then L is equal to zero, so that's why this is equal to two. So you multiply by two. So there we have it. This is this is A0. So let's just copy this down. So A0 is equal to this. Now actually we can change this into something we recognize. So wait, let's just get back to the original question first. So the inside potential of the sphere, it's given by this expression. So only a0 survives. So we have a0 r to the power of 0, p0 cosine theta. And both of these are equal to 1, so it's a0. So inside of the sphere, the <coughs> potential is a constant. So actually we can express this answer in terms of total amount of charge. So let's just say Q is a total amount of charge on the surface of the sphere. And so we can get rid of the sigma. And then we, ar we arrive at a pretty familiar expression. And this should be a R. So then we arrive at this expression, which we know is correct, right? So this is like a sanity check. We've shown that all the techniques, all the techniques we've used for the Laplace's equation, all of it makes sense. All of it is consistent with with all the results that we had before. And so now we're going to move on to the potential outside of the sphere. And then, just like in the previous section, we're going to use the continuity argument to find the constants b. So by the continuity argument, we know that. We know that both of these are related like this, right? You multiply AL by this, you get BL. So we know that A1 to A infinity, they're all zero. So only B0 exists. So L1, no, L is equal to zero, it's just one R. A0 is equal to R sigma divided by epsilon multiplied by another R. So this is B0. And so now we can write out the expression for the potential outside of the sphere. So B0 divided by R0 plus 1, so R, and P0 cosine theta. And this is just 1, so we can just uh, ignore it. So we get this expression here. And then once again, we're gonna, we can express this in terms of the total amount of charge. And then you see that we can get something that looks pretty recognizable. So r squared divided by epsilon r. So the r squares cancel out. So what you get now is 1 over 4 pi epsilon divided by q over r, which is once again entirely consistent with what we had before.